I have run out of time. I only have four minutes, probably not enough to the whole Compton scattering formula derivation. So I just want to um, set up the picture and describe what's seen experimentally as a kind of one of the early confirmation of the particle nature of light. So this is the um, setup for Compton, uh, set up for a Compton scattering experiment. This is what it looks like. Um, so in something called Compton scattering. Oh, sorry. It's a um, scattering of electromagnetic radiation by a charged particle. So in some sense, um, I mentioned the Rayleigh scattering, right? Yeah, so it's similar to Rayleigh scattering, except at the limit where the energy of the photon is much, much higher than Rayleigh scattering. So, um, so you have an electron sitting somewhere and you have, for whatever reason, people use the letter gamma to indicate photon. So you have photon come in, strike the electron, and let's uh, just uh, um, do a, um, a simplistic case. Let's say it's a head-on collision. So after colliding, photon scatters straight backward, and electron goes straight forward. Then um, electron will be moving that way with some velocity, and the photon will be coming back with some energy. Now, if you hear this description, and I tell you the photon has some incident energy, and as it bounces back, it has some finite energy, uh, what's your, what does your intuition say about how these two energies should relate? Should this, you know, should they be the same energy? They should be different, right? Why? Why different? Some energy goes to the electron. Yeah, conservation of energy. This is a collision. It feels like energy should be conserved. If the electron is moving, so it has some kinetic energy, then you feel like, all right, so the photon loses some energy, right? And you can actually analyze this picture that way with the special relativity taken into account, and you will get the correct result that you see experimentally. And this is why I'm saying this is one of the early proofs that this particle picture of light is correct, is because imagine you are analyzing this instead, um, trying to treat this photon like a wave. So then what you would represent this photon as is some kind of uh, oscillation of electric field and um, electric field, some kind of oscillation of electric field, right? Now, you can still understand why it would scatter, why you would have electric field coming backward. You would think of, it, all right, this electric field oscillating, it meets this electron, it causes the electron to oscillate up, up and down with it. And this oscillating electron would, um, would re-radiate some of the electromagnetic wave backward this way, right? So you say, all right, so I have some of this electromagnetic wave radiation going this way, which is also oscillating. Now, how would you say the frequency of the incident light relates to the frequency of the outgoing light? Same frequency or a different frequency? Yeah, your intuition says same frequency, right? And that intuitive answer turns out to be wrong here. Because when people do the experiment, it's usually with the X-rays or gamma rays. <laughs> um, shine it, have it colli collide with the electron, and measure the energy of the uh, light that's coming back, or the frequency or wavelength of the light coming back. Usually, wave okay, wavelength of the light coming back. The wavelength changes in the collision. So the classical prediction is that uh, frequency shouldn't change, so the wavelength shouldn't change. The particle prediction is that well, energy should change. And what's uh, measured is the energy does change. And um, so we'll do the full derivation next Tuesday. Um, it involves actual special relativity. Uh, as a matter of personal note, this was the first experiment that I did personally in upper division um, undergraduate lab at Berkeley, a gamma ray scattering experiment, where you actually had to take into account the special relativity. 
because those gamma rays have enough energy. These electrons are moving relativistically. That unless you use relativistically correct formulas, the results come out wrong. So uh, you can actually see the effect of relativity even in undergraduate lab in a setup like this. 